Hi, I'm Ken Leone, Marketing Manager for Stock Rover. Today, I'm going to talk about Stock Rover's Stock Ratings Facility, a powerful capability that helps investors find and vet quality long-term companies to invest in. Accessing Stock Ratings is as simple as going to More Goodies and selecting Stock Ratings. I've selected Apple. Here, we see that Apple has an overall percentile score of 80 against its industry peer group. The higher the percentile, the better the score. So an 80 shows that Apple just made the top two deciles. While there are stocks in the industry peer group that rank better, even more, eight deciles worth, ranked worse. Stock Rover is analyzing metrics in the six categories to arrive at the overall score of 80. For each of the six categories, growth, valuation, efficiency, financial strength, dividend, and momentum, Stock Rover selects the set of metrics that are critical to determining the performance of the stock in that specific category. And then for each metric in the category, Stock Rover looks at the value, trajectory, and the volatility of that metric and grades it against its peers using a proprietary algorithm to calculate a percentile score. In addition, each metric is assigned a weight based on its importance. Let's take a closer look at the scores. In the growth category, Apple scored in the 23rd percentile after ranking 82nd out of 108 companies. For valuation, Apple scored in the 37th percentile after ranking 67 out of 108 companies. For operating and capital efficiency, Apple scored in the 100th percentile, ranking 1 out of 108. For financial strength, Apple scored in the 67th percentile, ranking 35th out of 108 companies. For dividends, Apple scored in the 67th percentile, out of the companies that paid dividends. And for price momentum, Apple scored in the 96th percentile out of all rated stocks. Let's look more closely at the growth category to see how ranking works. Keep in mind the concepts I'm about to review are applicable no matter the category. We see that Apple scored a growth rating in the 23rd percentile. This score certainly played a factor in bringing down the overall score to 80. So why a score in the 23rd percentile? Stock Rover looked at the value, trajectory, and volatility of key growth metrics. It then ranked the performance of Apple relative to its industry peer group. Based on the rank, Stock Rover then generated the percentile scores we see here. Stock Rover analyzed revenue growth, operating income growth, net income growth, and earnings per share growth by looking at the computed one-year, three-year, five-year, and ten-year growth rates. We also look at the slope, which shows the trajectory of the raw growth metric, as well as the volatility of that growth to arrive at an overall raw score, which is then converted to the percentile against peers. Earnings per share and revenue are slightly below the average against peers. We also see that operating income and EBITDA score in the lower percentile of the 108 companies in the industry peer group. An example of a slightly different calculation is the revenue per employee metric, where we look at the industry group percentile ranking along with the trajectory and variability of revenue per employee over time. Now, revenue per employee is an example of a metric that has a lower weighting towards the overall growth score versus something like earnings per share, which has a higher weighting. So in this instance, even though Apple is at 92% in terms of revenue per employee, it's less impactful to the score than the growth metrics. We can also see that earnings per share and revenue projections for 2019 are projected to be somewhat flat. Let's look at the peers growth scores. Stock Rover has identified eight American companies from the computer hardware industry that are peers to Apple. 
you can see that Stock Rover does a really nice job of visualizing how Apple compares to its eight peers based on earnings per share, operating income, EBITDA, and revenue. The bar charts clearly show Apple's low scoring metrics, which contributed to the growth score of 23. Below that, we see a peers analysis. Stock Rover displays the eight selected peers. The sort order is based on the category, in this case, growth. We can see more clearly that peers like JBill and TechData have much better growth scores. Let's take a closer look at JBill. We can see it's clear that JBill's growth story is more compelling, with higher rankings in almost all categories. Stock Rover's rating facility isn't simply limited to researching individual stocks. Premium Plus users can leverage Stock Rover's specialized stock ratings view from the library. For example, I'll pick the screener Big Dogs with Growth. I'll select the Stock Rover Ratings view. Let's filter on ratings greater than 89. You can see that this is tremendously powerful as Stock Rover is doing all the heavy lifting with its analytics. Notice also we're spanning industry groups. This screener is identifying stocks based on a specific criteria. That criteria is based on market cap, volume, sales, earnings per share, and return versus the S&P 500. Let's now sort to find the stocks with the best overall score. Again, you can see this is extremely powerful. I'm going to delete my filter here. Speaking of screeners, the stock ratings are also available as screeners. They're actually in the Stock Rover library. Now, I've already imported my screeners from the library. You can see them down below. Let's take a quick look at the Stock Rover growth rating screener. This screener finds large cap stocks on the NYSE or NASDAQ that are in the top growth decile of Stock Rover's growth ratings, but that are also in the top two deciles for price momentum. So out of the 12,000 plus stocks, Stock Rover quickly identified 17 stocks across all industries that met the criteria. Here's our list of stocks. These screeners offer an incredible amount of analytics, and here I'll list some for you. One other thing that's important to note is that all Stock Rover users benefit from stock ratings, as the stock rating values are always included in the summary section of the Insight panel. Premium users can also get more details simply by clicking here. Keep in mind that Stock Rover does require minimum revenue and volume for a stock to be rated, so you may not see some of the small cap companies. In summary, the stock rating facility is a powerful part of Stock Rover's investment platform. It eliminates the investor's need to perform the, the heavy lifting and analytics. Stock Rover's advanced analytics present results in a clear and concise fashion, helping investors quickly find and vet long-term companies. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.